All right, welcome to tonight's town hall meeting. Uh, we will be uh, presenting to you some facts regarding uh, our membership in Capital Metro Transportation Authority and some other propositions that you will find on the November ballot. Uh, again, welcome to the meeting. I'm Ed Tidwell. I'll be your host tonight. Uh, I'm going to introduce, we got our council here. Let me see, I got to move my glasses. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem Kevin Sullivan's back here. Council Rob Durbin up front. Uh, Councilor Paul Roberts also up front. Councilor Shalane Marion up front. Uh, let's see, is uh, Gage here? Oh, there he is. Councilor Gage Hunt right there. Um, also tonight with us is uh, some representatives from Capital Metro that will be able to answer some questions from y'all as well. We have uh, Mr. Lawrence Trevino. He is the counselor coordinator for government affairs. Uh, we also have Roberto Gonzalez, who is the director of service planning. And we have Julie Mazur, manager, regional coordinator, coordination planning. And so welcome to Cap Metro for joining us here tonight. We also have some of our city staff in attendance. I don't know who all's here, but city staff, you can wave. Um, and we're going to start off. We have a video for y'all to see. All right. Proposition A on the upcoming November ballot will ask Lago Vistans if they wish to continue Cap Metro bus service within the city. If citizens vote yes, the status quo will remain. However, a no vote will trigger Proposition B. More on that in a minute. Cap Metro provides three primary services in Lago Vista. The Northwest Feeder to Lakeline Station where riders can transfer to other routes throughout the greater Austin area the on-demand pickup service within most of the Lago Vista city limits, and the ADA-approved Metro Access, the on-demand, shared ride service for people whose disabilities prevent them from riding on other bus and rail services. Cap Metro's bus service is funded by a 1% sales tax in Lago Vista. The state collects 6 and a quarter percent tax on sales, and local jurisdictions may add an additional 2%. Currently, the city of Lago Vista adds 1%, and Cap Metro adds 1%. The 1% for the city goes into the general fund, which pays for police, street maintenance, and other city services. This 1% has grown substantially in recent years. From just over $480,000 in 2018, it is projected to exceed $1 million in the coming fiscal year. A no vote on Proposition A will end our present arrangement with Cap Metro and the city would have to look elsewhere for a public transportation solution. Round Rock is unique in that it has a contract with Cap Metro for a negotiated fee rather than the 1% sales tax funding method. This could be a solution for Lago Vista as well. A no vote on Prop A will also trigger Proposition B, which would allow the city to redirect the taxes which had previously funded Cap Metro service to the city's general fund. While bus service would end the day after all votes are counted, this redirection of revenue would not happen until roughly 2027 as it will take five years for the city to pay its current $6.4 million balance to Cap Metro. None of this would alter the city's current 8.25% sales tax. Be an informed voter, visit LagoVistaTexas.gov for more info, and we'll see you at the polls. All right, thank you very much. And now I would like to introduce our city manager, Tracy Lavica, and she will have a presentation for you. Good evening, I am Tracy Lavinka. I'm the city manager for the city of Laga Vista. And I'm gonna give a little bit more in-depth information than what was on the video. Um, I, like the mayor said, we do have Cap Metro representatives, thankfully in the house tonight who can answer some questions. My job tonight is really to give you some facts, just so that you are an informed voter. I do have voter guides on the back of the table. Um, I believe Cap Metro brought a couple of, uh, a piece of information as well. So our job tonight is to make sure that whatever uh, facts we give you, that we give you clarity so that when you go to the polls, you are an informed voter. This is not our opportunity to sway you one way or another. 
Um, our job is to give you information so that when you go, you feel like you're making a choice based on what you feel is the right choice and you walk in as an informed voter. So I believe, Lucy, you have my clicker. All right. So um, let's first talk about some of the services that Cat Metro provides for Lago Vista. Uh, you heard in the video that they do three different services. You're going to see in another slide where we talk about four, but um, one of those really is irrelevant to us. Uh, we've got the Route 214. Uh, you will see that I believe there are 12 stops in Lago Vista. These are where you see some of the um, buses that can stop on the roadway or they stop up at our um, town center, town hall parking lot. Then we've got a pickup Lago Vista service where that is on demand, point to point. Oftentimes these are places that they go to like CVS, maybe Dollar General, some of those common areas that people would need to get to within Lago Vista. And then we've got what's called a Metro Access. Um, this is paratransit. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but that is for individuals that have disabilities that could possibly not get on one of their regular buses. Oh, she's good. She notices when I'm about to flip. So let's talk about some ridership information. And I'm, uh, I have taken this and I've had a conversation with Cat Metro, discern this from some graphs and some information that they have provide, provided to us at the city. Um, that bus stop, those routes on 214, those 12 bus stops, those are actually operated by carts which some people have given some input into, you know, we could go with carts. Well, they are already operating with Capital Metro. So that is an operation that they facilitate for these types of bus stops and this bus. Um, there have been on average anywhere from zero to three riders per trip. Has anybody in here ridden on any of the routes on 214? Perfect. Anna. How many people were on the bus when you got on there? Shalane. Oh. Who was the other person over here? That. How many people were on the bus when you were on it? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I'm asking just because those that have experienced, you can talk from experience. I do not. I had another one back here. <laughs> okay. Um, and there's another reason why I'm asking these questions. Not, I think it's important for us to know what types of services if we go to alternate services based on what the vote is so that we can know how much demand is during the day, maybe there are peak hours, things of that nature. So those are some of the reasons why I'm asking those questions. Then we've got the, um, the pickup service, which like I said, curb to curb. Some people go to some of our common areas that are around town. We also have a thing called ride share. Currently nobody is, um, on that service, nobody is utilizing that service. So I'm sticking to the high points, which are the three that, that we're actually utilizing. Then there's Metro Access. This is the disability where somebody couldn't get on the bu buses. Currently, um, I believe that there is one person that is on this um, and they get uh, three trips per week. Um, they are already set up in their system. Um, they can tell me if that is incorrect. So um, we ha have gotten that from um, a newspaper and some of the information that was provided to us. Lawrence, you look like you want to say something. I was about to say, somebody get that man a mic. Uh, Lawrence Trevino, uh, Government Affairs Coordinator. Um, just want to provide some clarification for Metro Access. There's one subscription customer for that. There's one subscription uh, person, one subscription customer for Metro Access, and they have it set up so that it's regular, that they're picked up specifically for certain events, certain times. There's also five other additional individuals that reach out um, for other services. So, like the other five individuals for this year aren't on a subscription, but they utilize the service when they need it. So, right now, there are six customers, but one subscription member. We really appreciate that clarity. That helps because Councillor Marion and I were really tangling with that one. 
Thank you. So let's talk about how these funds or services are funded. So we talked about an 8.25 sales tax. 6.25 is the state's. That leaves two cents that the um, Texas Local Government Authority and uh, has said you can do something with that two cents. One cent currently right now goes to the city of Laga Vista and the other goes to Cap Metro. That is based on what the Texas state sales tax and what they have the right to put as an authority to take that other cent. So I want to make sure that I don't confuse you. 6.25 is the state's. We have one going to the city of Laga Vista and one going to Cap Metro. That's going to be important when we get later in this presentation. That brings you to a total of 8.25. So when you go somewhere and you are charged sales tax on any materials, retail, leases, those types of things, you are paying a sales tax of 8.25. That sales tax then gets divvied up and everybody gets their portion of it. The city gets one portion of it. And as you saw in the video, it pays for streets, police, parks, trails, all the things that are in our general uh, fund. And then the state gets their 6.25. I will not comment on what they put that to because that's not my bailiwick. And then Cap Metro puts theirs toward um, operations, which we'll talk about in a moment. Um, I want to make sure that I also tell you this was brought by a vote of the voters in 1985. So this is something that when you voted, when Lago Vista voted in, they voted to do um, Capital Metro Services, and that one cent was a part of that, so that that was a portion of when they opted into the service. All right, Miss Lucy, thank you. So Capital Metro um, uses that one cent to pay for contracts. They pay for salaries, pensions, improvements to transportation services in all the cities, not just us. So there are other member cities that that also assists with. Um, capital project expenses, maintenance and operations. Did I miss any of the high points there? Yeah, if you've got a microphone. <laughs> Um, one of the things I want to highlight is uh, whenever it comes to the collection of, of the sales tax, what we do at Cap Metro is we take the amount that we receive from y'all as far as that one cent, and then we subtract the cost of service for that year, and the difference is offered back to the city through a, a BCT fund, which is Build Central Texas Fund, which those funds could be used for infrastructure, roads, stuff like that, whatever meets our criteria, the city council will, will send it over, it will be approved or not approved, and then it'll, the funds will be distributed back to the city. So that's what we try to do is the delta, so the difference between cost of service as well as the cost uh, that we collect from y'all, we try to give it back to y'all through the BCT funds. If you will let me get all the way through it, because I may answer your question, but I will not forget. Absolutely, I will not forget. Um, so that Build Central Texas, we have received funds from... Uh, Capital Metro, it has been on average 42000 each year. This year, there is more in the coffer that they are opting to disperse back to their seven, seven member cities. And I believe it's close to 702. Uh, so the amount is closer to uh, $702,000. That's the additional fund. So, so this year, um, the Cap Metro Board approved taking $10 million and distributed it across the seven member cities based on proportion as far as the, the service we're providing to the area. And so out of that, seven, uh, that $10 million, $702,000 was offered up to Cap Metro as a one-time allotment, and as well as $102,000 uh, from the BCT fund. So the difference between uh, cost of service um, plus the sales tax we collect from y'all, we had an additional 129,000 plus the 702,000. So this is one time, uh, as you heard him say, this will not be something that is going to go further into the years. We have a limited amount of time to do this. We have submitted some streets and some projects. 
um, and we're hoping to get those done before um, the end of this year. But that is something that this is the first time we've seen that. In the past, it's been 42000 on a regular basis. We normally have to spend the money for Build Central Texas, and then we reimburse, we submit our receipts, and then those re um, monies are reimbursed back to us. So let's talk about the historical view of our sales tax. Um, our sales tax started when we started with um, sales tax in 2018. It was a little over 408000 as you can see, Jane, tell me if I'm blocking your view. Um, it has increasingly gone up through the years. To this year, we are estimating and projected over $1 million. And that comes from the fact that we have more things in Lago Vista um, that you can go and spend your dollars to and that we get the sales tax. Again, that is the 1% that is separated out from the 2% that we get as the city. Um, even though these services have gone up, I mean, these um, sales tax has gone up, the services have stayed the same. So um, just so you know that we're continuing to put the sales tax in, but we're getting the same amount of services, except for in 2020, we had a service that was added, and that was the Metro Access service. Pickup. I'm sorry. Thank you. Pickup service. So here's the big takeaway that I want you to be clear on as you walk away from this um, presentation. Next one is what do the propositions look like? And there was a lot of conversation the last time five years ago that the propositions were very vague and that people didn't understand what they were going in. I think that not only did the state but the transportation authority recognize that that could be a real hiccup for those that are trying to make decisions so this is exactly what the ballot will look like, as in the proposition. You also received a voter guide that gives you that exact language um, so that you can be informed. It clearly states Proposition A, which will show up as Capital Metropolitan Transportation Authority Continuation, will be the header, and it will state, shall the Capital Metropolitan Transportation Authority be continued in the city of Lago Vista? Now, if you have any doubts, I'm going to tell you what both those mean so that even if it seems vague to you, you will know how you would like to vote when you get there. A yes vote would continue funding services for Capital Metro from the one cent sales tax that they currently receive. So that conversation about the one cent sales tax earlier, they would continue to receive that if your vote is a yes. If you choose no on the ballot, then that would stop Cap Capital Metro services on the day after the elections are canvassed. And for those of you that know, once we have an election, we have to canvass those votes and we have to certify them. That will be on November 17th is the date that we have scheduled for the canvassing. So it's either A, yes, A, no, and I say A is in proposition. So you as the voters, um, are there any questions about how that proposition reads? That's a first for me. I'll take it. All right, let's get to the complicated one. Proposition B. I say this is complicated because you just need to read carefully so you know what you're actually wanting to do. Proposition B is about the general, general revenue sales tax, and it is a condition upon majority no vote on Proposition A. So in other words, there has to be a majority vote on Proposition A to withdraw from Cap Metro before this proposition actually will have some action to it. But you still have to vote on it. It's still important that when you go in, because you won't know whether or not there is a majority vote because you are one vote. So um, prop, it says if you vote yes, your vote would allow the city, sorry, to collect all 2% of the general revenue sales and use that tax rather than the 1% the city currently captures for Cap Metro services and Cap Metro services captures. And the sales tax would remain the same. That's real important. Your sales tax is not changing where that 1% is funding is changing. So I, 
I don't want you to step away and think that that sales tax is going up. It's not. Um, if you voted no on Proposition A and Proposition B, in other words, the one we just spoke about and this one, um, you would leave with the general revenue exactly where it is. It would still be funding Capital Metro. Uh, so it wouldn't change anything based on how those votes are actually tallied. If there was a vote of yes on Proposition A, regardless of the majority vote on Proposition B, it would leave the general revenue where it's at as well. And they would still be collecting and the city would be collecting one cent a piece. I don't see any stargazed eyes, so I think we're good. I'm going to move on. I'll take more questions here in a little bit. Okay. I'm sorry I didn't allow you to. Can I ask you to wait? I'm going to treat everybody fairly. <laughs> All right. So the net financial obligation. Here's an important point for you as taxpayers, regardless of the vote. Okay. We have an obligation to pay for um, a net financial, meaning to carry out all the services that are provided while we have been in Capital Metro. So they call it the net financial obligation. It actually is a calculation that is in the transportation code. So you can go look at the transportation code. It tells you exactly that it's there. It tells you how you would opt in to a, a transit authority. It tells you how you would opt out to a transit authority. If you have any questions, that is what actually guides us. It guides Capital Metro as to how we do these things. So even if there was a majority no vote to withdraw, the Metro access services would still continue. In other words, one way or another, there will be access services for the disabled. So those will not go away, and we will have an obligation to pay for those things. I see him jumping up. Hello. Okay. <clears throat> so it would be for, correct, Metro Access service would continue as long as that person is a subscriber to Metro Access and qualified and is a subscriber before the vote. So once that vote takes place, if that person wasn't a Cap Metro, uh, Metro Access subscriber, they wouldn't be able to access the Metro Access service. And then if that, for example, if that subscriber moves out of Lago Vista, then, then the service would stop for them. Or if they moved out of uh, their, your network, they would, they, would remove from, they would remove themselves from the service as well. But yeah, Cat, uh, Lago Vista would cover that fee that for Cat Metro to continue to provide service to that one subscriber. So if, for example, somebody subscribes before the, the vote takes place, then that person would also qualify for the Metro access. But outside of that, they wouldn't be able to do it. So, and as we mentioned earlier, I'm all about the facts. Right now we have one subscriber. Is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Um, the other Im important point is that we would have to pay back that net financial. Even if there was a majority vote to withdraw, we are still obligated through the transportation code to pay back that net financial. That net financial right now is approximately $6.5 million. Um, there's a big difference from five years ago. So if some of you were at a town hall and you heard a number that was way lower than that, because of the services that we talked about er earlier, contracts, salaries, pensions, all those things add up. And to this day right now, we're at 6.5 million. We as the city would still have an obligation to pay that net financial obligation back. It would take us somewhere between four, I'm going to say four to six, depending on what happens with the sales tax. But as the sales tax increases, you're paying off that net financial faster. That net financial obligation, what it is accruing, would stop as soon as there is a vote of a majority to withdraw. So in other words, it wouldn't continue to add up. It would the clock stops right there with any services that are attributed to how they divide that up for their member cities. That would be our net financial obligation and that would be what we would need to pay. Oftentimes you'll hear it called an NFO so that if you hear an acronym, that's what we're talking about. And that has really been a conversation that I have to applaud my council with asking some fabulous questions in regards to how that really impacts you as the taxpayers. So 
They've been asking lots of questions to get that type of information so that we could provide this to you. Um, and again, your sales tax revenue goes up, so it could pay that net financial obligation off faster. But then again, I don't have my crystal ball and I don't know what next year is going to be when it comes to sales tax, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed. So if any of y'all are watching what's on the market these days, I don't want to know. <laughs> Disability services. Capital Metro must continue to provide that service to the one subscriber right now. Anybody, like he said, if you got a subscription before they go to the vote, then they would be added to this. We would be responsible for paying for that one subscriber right now. It's around $20,000. Um, as of September 22nd, we know that that, I mean, September of this year, we know that that is the one subscriber. Um, the city of Lago Vista would be required to pay it, like I said, so this person is not going to go without services. Next, there are opportunities from alternate um, transportation. And again, I have to applaud the council because they have actively said, depending on what happens during this vote, they intend to provide something. We just don't know what that looks like. And so they, their intent was so definite that they put 250,000 in the proposed budget that we started on October 1st. So I'd like to say they put their money where their mouth is, but they don't know what that looks like yet. Um, so those alternate services can be anything from um, a rideshare program, which uh, the city of Kyle is doing and Buda. Um, it could be anywhere from taxi services, some taxi service that would decide that they want to have a contract to do these things. Community buses, van pull services. I've already gone through rideshare, or we could do a contractual service with Capital Metro, which they have done that with some other entities. So there are options. It's all a matter of how we would structure something and provide that. The council will be making some of those discussions at their next meeting, and then we will work on trying to provide that. I would love to tell you that there would not be a break in services. I cannot give you that expectation right now. Now, there is a possibility that we could provide something in the medium if there is a majority vote, but I don't want you to walk away and think that on the day that the votes are canvassed, that the very next day we'd have something in operation because logistically it's not possible right now. But we are working actively to make sure that something would be put in place very immediately. Um, let me talk about some of the other services that already take place so that you have an idea. And these discussions will be taking place again with the council next week. There are other communities that have entered these contractual services with Cap Metro, um, and they provide service for them. It does not require that 1% sales tax is contractual, so it's, they've already withdrawn. The other is that there are some communities that are participating this way, Buda, Georgetown, Pflugerville, Round Rock. Um, we got Buda and Georgetown's contracts. So right now, that's what these look like in cost analysis. Um, we're not those communities, so I cannot tell you what that would look like for us. All I can tell you is from the documents that we received, this is what they are allocating in their um, services. Um, and then Lago Vista recently approved, like I said, 250000 just to make sure that they have a plan for alternate transportation. So, uh, if it's okay for me to say a few words here. This is the program that I manage. I'm Julie Mazur, the Manager of Regional Coordination Planning with Cap Metro. So this is what you see here is a part of our service expansion policy and program. I work with these cities directly. Um, part of this program is cities that are outside of the Cap Metro service area, but inside the urbanized area. As Lago Vista is not urbanized, they would work with CARTS directly. Obviously, we're waiting for some census information as well, and the last we've heard is that could possibly be out in December of this year. So I work directly with Buda, Georgetown, Pflugerville, um, and all of that. We have different services with the different partners. We're continuing our service with Round Rock. Georgetown, as well as we have a partnership with Travis County. And so that goes through um, the service expansion program and policy, and that is utilizing the Section 5307 funds. And again, that's for areas within the urbanized area. 
hope that clarifies. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. So let's talk about when you need to show up and vote. Um, we do have early voting that will be starting soon. If you have not registered yet, it's too late. So I hope that you got your registration in and it's postmarked as of yesterday, I believe, um, so that you can be a part of this election. Um, we have Monday, October 24th through Saturday, the 29th. We have Sunday, the 30th, Halloween, Monday, October 31st. So go early through November the 4th. There, the closest for us in early voting is the Christ Episcopal at Whitestone Boulevard in Cedar Park. Now, we worked really hard to try to get one here, and ADA accommodations are very important. And so they did not have those types of um, facilities located at the time they had to, as in Travis County elections, not us. Um, but we, we worked feverishly and unfortunately, and I have to give a shout out to the chamber too, they tried as well. We couldn't get one in the city this time. That doesn't mean next time that we won't. Election day is November the 8th. And if some of you are those that feel like you need to go on election day, November 8th, keep telling yourself that, it will be right here, one of them. The other will be at the high school, um, and that is from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. So I highly encourage you to go out in early voting. If not, November the 8th is your day to get out there and vote. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody with I Voted stickers on their arms or on their shirts because um, it's important for you as a community to make this decision. The council did a fabulous job at vetting the information and decided it was time that it, they take this back to the voters. So now it's in your hands as to what it is that will take place after that. And um, I know that I'm bragging on this council a little and it may seem uh, boisterous, but they really have angst over how we're getting to where we are, what we're doing. The mayor put a, a small committee together they worked on this. They worked with Cap Metro, Sam Sargent, before he left Cap Metro. And so this has not been something that they made a knee-jerk decision about. They've actually been looking toward this for about nine months. Um, and now they've made the decision that it's up to you as the voters to come up with what you would like to do. And then they want to make sure that either way there will be services. What those look like, again, we do not know but they wanted to make sure that we had done some planning so that we can get some things in operations should those be what is necessary after the vote. So I'm now going to turn it over to questions, you being the first one because you've got a lovely hat and you've been so patient. I think there was... Now I don't know if I can... <laughs> if they'll be able to answer that. Jane, you're next. I'm loud enough. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'll try not to be so loud. So I don't understand about the money. Okay. She talked about six and a half million dollars, and she indicated that it was uh, accumulating. So are we going to owe you more and more? I mean, do we owe you six and a half million? Wait, we wait, can write wait. you a check tonight. We'd be even. Wait, wait, wait. Is it off? Nope. I'm just being him up. So that amount that that uh, Tracy was referring to is our net financial obligation. That was calculated as of March, the end of March of this year. So the net financial obligation is most likely going to rise by the time y'all do vote out because it's based on contracts we have, you know, currently accumulated as we move forward. So as of right now, that number that was referred to, 6.5 million, was as of March of this year. But when you keep the service of the next Oh, year, correct, yes. So as we continue to owe you more and more. You would, yes, yeah. Would, that would number we, would continue to grow as long as we're, we're growing as a regional transportation uh, agency because we're going to be contracting out to build further lines and, and to continue to grow the network. So that number would most likely continue to grow up as we move forward. And are we paying off some of that money now? No. So that's only paid off when the, the city decides to leave the network. So you don't pay into that. Uh, oh, it's a balloon payment at the end. Should the, should the, so we need yeah. to keep the service forever and never pay you off. So, so the way, the way yeah, that, that in essence would be the case. So okay. that, that was, that, yeah. 
Okay, and now your revenues are the one percent. Is that right? Correct. We collect, and 1%. and you're giving back to the city some of the revenues. We do. Correct. So you gave forty-eight thousand a couple of years in a row or more, right? And and this year, one hundred twenty-nine thousand. That's the number I wanted. One hundred twenty-nine this year. Yes, correct. So that's revenue to the city. Correct. Okay. In addition to which, the one percent the city was already getting, doubled, and that they want part of it. I'm sorry. I, I thought I was loud enough. So the city's part, their one percent. Their income doubled from 400000 to a million, roughly. Of course, your income also doubled, right? Yes. Because you're getting that 1%, the other 1%. Correct. And yet the city, after getting double the money, still wants some of their money and cancel the service. What do we get? How will there be the net benefit if we vote no? Nothing will change except we won't have the service. We'll still be paying them off. Plus, then we have a debt to you. Correct. Of yes. $6.5 million. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I have a silly question. This whole contract with Cat Metro, I think, is bizarre. <laughs> if you want to get out, you got to pay for everything going on in Austin. So we, as of March, have to pay $6.5 million. My question is, there's two. Is that money you've already spent, or is that money you're projected to spend? If you're projected to spend it, when are you going to spend it? And how much have you spent actually in the Lago Vista? Thank you. So to start off, I'll, I'll touch base on uh, the net financial obligation, the 6.5 million she referred to. Uh, that was, that's calculated out of a state the state legislator in 1995 passed a law that required that anybody that's leaving a uh, transportation agency pay a net financial obligation so that the agency doesn't go under if a city does leave. Um, as far as the money, the projected money, it's based off of contracts that we do have uh, assigned at the time of your uh, decision to leave the network. So if it's money, it's, it's money that's contractually agreed to pay into it. So. I don't think we could do that as an agency because of the, usually every contract has a legal ramification, so I, I can't speak to that specifically. But you could sign more contracts and run that bill up, could you not? That's usually calculated by you know, a different department. What I will say is we are continuing to try to grow as an agency, and so that oh, number could, that number could. Okay, re answer the rest of my question. How much of 6.5 or 10 million, whatever, have you spent on Lago Vista in any kind of capital improvement? Have you even um, mowed around the bus stop down on Barquet? So I can't, I can't speak to that. I, I do apologize about that. I can gather more information and provide you with that. Uh, and any other questions that come in that I don't know the information about? You I don't know how it. much money you spent on anything out here in Lago Vista? No, I, I can't. Yeah, I don't have that information with me. It would be nice to know. Absolutely. So I'll get that, and I could pass it over to the Okay, the thank you. So my name's Gwen McFarland, and um, I live over here um, very close, just off, off Barquet. So um, two questions. Um, the registered voting is closed, like, yesterday. So, wow, I didn't know about that. So I'm not going to be able to vote. Okay, um, okay. Mm, number two, um, so one of the things that I think, um, uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the services that Capital Metro has been providing us is shuttles to our events here, is that right? It wasn't on there, so I just like, am I wrong? <laughs> so, thank you. Yes, they have, um, this is something that we do not have contracted. This is something that we pretty much negotiate each year um, that is done through our PIO who, if we're having an event, they try to make sure that we have the capabilities to do that. 
Um, that is not always guaranteed. So in other words, at any point in time, they can tell us that they are not going to do that service based on the number of drivers they have, based on the number of equipment they have. So we are gracious that in the past they have actually provided those services for us. But we've also had this past year where it was kind of at the dire straits at the very end that we didn't know whether or not they would be providing it. So we always have something in our back pocket. But you are correct. They have provided those services for our festivals. Do you have any other? Yes. Yeah. He asked if at any charge. I'm going to get her because um, I have done that. And then you're next. I'm totally disabled, and I want to know what my. Oh, okay. I'm totally disabled, and I didn't plan on being this way. I thought I lived my old age to be healthy and happy, and I had surgery, and I am disabled. And I'm homebound, and I live in my own house alone, and I need a bus that runs by my house so I can get on it, go to the grocery store, and do the things I need to do. And there's a lot of people like me out here in Laga Vista because we are an aging group of people. And sooner or later, you may need a ride. And I'd appreciate a bus that stops in front of my house because I need to go to the grocery store. I need to go to the dentist. I need to do many things. And I cannot drive. But I'm, I'm thinking about getting my uh, car out of the garage and learning to drive the damn thing one way or the other. And how many people am I going to kill trying to get to the damn grocery store? <laughs> I mean, I want to know when I walk out of here, do I have transportation that will come in front of my house and help me? Or do I have to sell my beautiful home and move to a, a, a living facility somewhere? And where are all the people that are old and dying and sick by themselves? We don't have a senior citizen place to go to, to have lunch every now and then, play cards. What is out here for us when we get older? And I want to live here with the assurance that I'll have something that comes by the front of my house on 6115 Cimarron Trail to get me somewhere when I need to be there. Yes. I don't care what it is. I want to guarantee that I have something out there when I need it. But well, what what is the time limit there? How long do we have to wait? Do I have to wait in that house six years before I get something to come by? Will it be a month? Well, I, I may call you tomorrow. <laughs> All right. But listen, there's a lot of people like me. We need something out there. I don't care what. And I pay a lot of taxes, but they say, oh. So I would, <laughs> I would tell you, remember how we talked about the disabled services. If you are registered as a subscriber, then you would still have those services. So even if there was a majority vote, so we will make sure that these individuals over here with Cap Metro, we will make sure that they speak with you before they leave so that either way. Well, that would be why we're videotaping this and we're putting it on our website so that we can make sure that those same individuals will have the same information. So if you know somebody, make sure they look at the video. Make sure that we get that information to them. I, there might be. Where did you cut I'm coming. I'm, I'm cutting the middle. Pardon me. Oh, I'm over here. Oh, I didn't <laughs> see you. So then you've got the middle one. Right. Okay, thank you. I'm just curious how y'all count your riders. I saw it was 4.8 riders per day for the last average, for what, the last 30 days or something like that? Okay, so how do you count those? Is that one person four times a day, or is that four different people? And I'd like to know how many different residents in the city use Capital Metro. Is it 20? Is it 50? If it's 20, that's 50 grand a piece. So that's kind right. of expensive that way. 
uh, that ridership data is kind of hard to, uh, I guess, decipher sometimes. And so I do understand if, you know, when I, when I shared it with the city, um, it's hard to kind of navigate through. And so I brought my own set of slides that just solely address ridership. If, if, if the city allowed, it would be willing to let me show that. But overall, the data that we presented is solely Lago Vista specific. So for example, Route 214 goes beyond, Cat Metro, or beyond Lago Vista, but the numbers that we pulled were specifically related to um, Lago Vista, specifically in the 12 uh, bus stops that we have. As far as pickup service, the pickup service, um, for example, the, for the month of September of 2022, this is only within Lago Vista. We had about 1,600, 1,627 trips overall. So it'd be trips, and you could divide that by two if you wanted to, just look at a round trip. So 1,627 trips is what's one way. And so again, you could divide it, and that would be a round trip for somebody that's using the service. So if we're looking at continued riders, continue, people that continue to use pickup service for the month of September, we had 109. And then as far as new users of the pickup service, we had another 37 that signed up uh, in September of 2022. So that's, let me see, that's a total of 146 users for the month of September. And that, again, pickup is only within a specific boundary, and those pickup services are only provided within Lago Vista. And that's not individual users, right? Or is it? So, so the 146 users is going to be um, individual users, is what we have, because it's, it's returning users and then 37 new users. And then the overall, but the number, like 1,627 would be trips. And then again, if, if you want to assume the person's going to come back home, you could divide that by two. And so that would give you the number for the month of September specifically. And so as we've seen, based on our data for specifically pickup service, we have seen an increase since pickup service was introduced in August of 2020, up until now, it's been a continued increase as we move forward throughout the year. Thank you. Uh, this is a question for Cat Metro. Two quick questions, just to follow up on the continuation of services for the individuals with disabilities. You said that you had to already be a subscriber on the date of the election to continue that service to those disabilities? Is, is that your reading of, of 451 of the transportation code? Because I read it as a shall. I don't think that you, is there an authority in the, and I guess your agency rules that you can exclude somebody who wasn't subscribed that has disabilities afterwards? So the way we read the code, or our legal department read the code was that whoever's a subscriber when the vote is canvassed, or when the vote takes, yeah, is canvassed, are the ones that are gonna be continued to, we continue to provide service to legally. Uh, after that, we were not allowed to include anybody else once the canvas of the vote. So that's how we interpreted uh, the transportation code specifically for that section. Is there, is there any opportunity to ever have a discussion with the board on that interpretation? That's something we, I could look into and I could provide, I can get your contact and provide you with information about that. Go from there. Okay, thank you, and my second question was, and this is more maybe a request if you could provide this to the city, but are you able to provide the date that you were aware that we were considering bringing this to an election and any of those contractual obligations that maybe occurred afterwards that are going to be applied towards our net financial obligation? So uh, when we found out Lago Vista was going to leave, you want the information about contracts that were signed after that? Okay. Correct. I could look into that and see what we could pull and uh, you know, run it by legal and provide it to the council here. All right. Thank you. Yes, my name is Lawrence Trevino. Yes, T-R-E-V-I-N-O. No problem. My email address is gonna be my first name, last name, so Lawrence, L-A-W-R-E-N-C-E, dot Trevino, T-R-E-V-I-N-O, at catmetro.org. I do, I do have a two-part question on the continued service if we continue on with the access service. Mm. So you did say right now we do have one person that has this prescription, but you have six p 
people that utilize it. We have, we have five other individuals besides the initial subscriber that use the service. Okay, now, and stated that it was 20,000 a year. Now, is that based per rider? So, like, if, let's say, the other five sign up, then when we're working on the budget, then it would go up to 100,000? That is... For those services? Let me... I will have to verify, but that is the way that uh, it was explained to the board uh, last month. I'll verify, and I can provide that just for clarification, whether or not it's going to be an additional... 20,000 per person or if it's specifically if it's be less since they're already over here so I could find out about that and then what are the guidelines that would consider someone as um, disabled to qualify for this service so, so we have an eligibility process uh, that we that the individual would have to apply through they would they would provide certain information to the cat Metro individuals that evaluate it and then they would be approved or not approved uh, under that specific code. And I could, okay. yeah, and I believe it's on our website, but I'll send it to the city just to make sure that they, they have it. I wanted to add to what the lady said about um, being an aging population or not being able to drive. Um, if the Cap Metro bus, even though it's a feeder bus, doesn't, if it stops running, the person that lives out here would have no means to get into Austin if they don't drive. You can't, we can't get to Cedar Park. So if doctors, if your doctors are in Austin, that cuts that option off completely. And also, I don't know if it's correct or not, but I was told before I moved out here that Logo Vista was no longer approving new subscriptions for Metro Access that only people that had been living here at a certain point were eligible for the service. So that may be why there's not more, if that's correct, that may be why there's not more people on the service. So, so real quick, just to answer your question about Metro Access, um, Lago Vista doesn't decide if someone signs up for Metro Access or not. It's just a process through Cat Metro. So if you were to apply, for example, and you're approved, then you would become a subscriber and you could set up your times to be picked up and stuff and that and dropped off. As far as um, that process, it's not a long process. So if that's something, we can provide the information again to the council and they can provide it to you about Metro Access and more information about that. Okay, and I have one other question or comment. Um, you said this sir, the Metro Access service would continue be provided, but right now, the, any dealings that I had with Cap Metro in Austin, the service only ran if there was a bus that ran in the area on the days that you wanted to go. For example, I know people that live somewhere where there's not a Metro Access, I mean a Cap Metro bus that runs on Sunday, therefore they can't take Metro Access on Sunday. I know that is, uh, that's a fact. I know people that live with that all the time. So what would determine people being able to use the Metro Access if there's no bus cap Metro to tie that uh, criteria to? Yes, ma'am, I'll go ahead and address that okay. real quick. Um, so for paratransit, it runs three quarters of a mile from a fixed route. So those times can expand and decrease throughout the day, depending on what times those routes are running. So if you have a route that stops at 10, then the paratransit will, will end at 10. We do have on our website, there's a um, interactive map that you can use to be able to see what services would be available at that time. And Lawrence can send out that, um, that link. In Austin, if you aren't within the three quarter of the um, bus stop, or if it doesn't run on Sunday, Metro do access doesn't run. So that's what I'm asking. If you are saying that Metro access would still be available for the people that are on the service, there's no Cap Metro scheduled to tie it to if Cap Metro is not out here with a fixed route bus. That is correct. Okay. This is a question for Capital Metro. For users that need to subscribe, how long is the approval process? 
And do you have things in place for people that are not techno with technology where they can just call and get this done? Um, because a lot of people don't have computers and don't have internet. So I, I can't speak to the, how long the process is. I could see if, there's, if it varies. And then if so, where are we at when it comes to someone applying for that? As far as someone applying, they can apply by calling and going through the process that way as well versus having to go online. And do you have the number where they need to call? So it's going to be a... Yeah, watch. It's, it's going to be 512... 389, correct, 389 7501. So 512 389 7501. And if ever you have any questions on Capital Metro, the general number, and, it, and this is on our uh, different pieces of information, is 512 474. One two zero zero five one two four seven four twelve hundred, and that goes to our customer service center, and then they decide how those those uh, numbers are routed or how that information is routed to the property department. So he gave you the specific number to Metro Access and speaking to staff specifically, but there could be other questions that come to us um, that, that can be then routed to the correct people. Okay, I have a question. I voted last uh, last time we voted. I voted for. Staying with Cap Metro, even though I understood the financial uh, challenges for that. But I was just concerned that we were going to drop the people who needed the service out here without a plan. So my question is more to our city and or to our city council. If I vote against it, if I vote to get out of Cap Metro, do we have a commitment to keeping transportation services doing on our own because frankly I would like more flexibility if we had our own customized system then we could take people to Cedar Park we could take them wherever they needed to go we wouldn't be constrained by a lot of the things that Cat Metro has to abide by and so I would be in favor if we could do it financially if we could really promise our citizens that we wouldn't drop them but we would come up with a program that would really be tailor-made to them, and that I think it could even be better if we did it ourselves, if we have the commitment. Well, thank you very much for the segue, because I was sitting here waiting my turn to get up and tell you what my intentions are, and I'm hoping council may be in here with me. What we want for our citizens is pretty much what Robin has just mentioned. We would like to have bus service that not only covers half of our city, but it covers the entire city. So if you want to go from your house on the Highland Lake Drive, where I live, and the pickup service is not available to me, and I want to go out to Sunset Park, I want that ability. I want that ability for all the citizens to get wherever they want to go within the city limits. And I also want them to be able to do that seven days a week. If you want to go to the park on Sunday, you can go. I would like a service that goes up to the airport when we have gas pilots that fly in. I would like for there to be a bus stop up there so that people can get on the bus and come down and eat at our restaurants or maybe play a round of golf before they fly out. I would like a bus service that not only goes to Lake Line Transit Center so you can get on the, on the train, but it also goes to Cedar Park Hospital. Then it goes to Walmart. It goes to 1890 Ranch. If you need to go into Leander, maybe it can go into Leander. And who's to say that when we are able to start looking into other services that we can't get other cities that don't participate in Cap Metro, like Cedar Park, to join with us. And so now we've got services that get not only from Lago Vista, but to Cedar Park and maybe throughout Cedar Park to other locations. So as you mentioned, there's a lot of things that we are going to be looking for if the citizens decide that they want to get out of Cap Metro. Um, so, 
yes, we would love to have something tailored and much more accessible to everybody around city. Yes, we will. We're your council is definitely committed to finding a plan that works for our community. Just to uh, excuse me, just to echo a little bit, working uh, what Robin said. The needs in this community are great, and I'm, I'm very disappointed that the city council and the mayor have been talking about this for six or seven months, and I didn't realize it was going to be on the ballot until about two weeks ago. You know, where, where is this conversation taking place? If we are anticipating a service to replace a service that you are planning on or encouraging us, baby, to get rid of, where have you been having a discussion about what's going to replace this service? Have you been talking about that for six months? Have you reached out to the other agencies? Have you figured out how you're going to finance it? We are under-informed as a group, to have a population of over 8,000 people out here and have, we could barely have them, this is not even a congregation. Uh, we would take up a collection and we couldn't buy hot dogs. This is not the way it's supposed to work. Now, two bits of reality. We purchased our home out here in 1989. At that time, Cat Petro was here. Soon after that, I worked as a physician in the clinic in Jonestown. I had patients come to me regularly who couldn't come back to the CVS here because they would not fill their prescriptions because it wasn't a Medicaid pharmacy. So now we look at the history of Cap Metro and cities. They couldn't take a bus to Cedar Park and get their prescriptions because Cap Metro was voted out of Cedar Park over 15 years ago. And that, so they, my patients, would ride their bus to Lakeline to get their penicillin and come back. And most of these were pretty sick people to start with. It's painful. Yes, our population is growing. Many of them are younger. However, many of these young people are bringing their elderly parents out here to live with them. And they're going to need services. And we're not going to be in a position to provide those services with what's planning has been discussed as I perceive it by the city council or the mayor or anyone else. If I'm incorrect, please tell me. All right, very good point. So we have been discussing this for quite some time uh, in the city council meetings. Uh, the videos are out there. You can go back and watch the video of the council meetings over the last, I don't know, nine months or so that we've been discussing um, participation in CAP Metro. Uh, there were steps that had to be taken in July and August to even get this on the ballot. So council has been discussing whether to put this on the ballot or not for quite some time. Now you talk about the plans. We have reached out to several different types of services that are out there. One of the things that we have problems with is, as you heard earlier, there's a thing called a UAZ, Urban Area Zone or something like that. Some of the transportation services are not allowed to negotiate with us while we are still members of Capital Metro. So we'll reach out to them, like CARTS, for example. Uh, CARTS subcontracts for Cap Metro. They actually provide the bus that we currently ride right now. So CARTS is out there. But they will not and cannot speak to us about any type of services until the vote is taken. So we've got all of those different types of services lined up for consideration. We just have to know on November 8th whether we can talk to them or not. Once we do that, once we are able to talk to them, then we can start hashing out all the different type of services that we would like to see and whether they can provide them or not. And then there's a whole process where we have to put out an RFP and um, things like that to you know, to bring in the services, but we are working on it. It's just there's things that we can't necessarily negotiate just yet. Yes, I'd like some help understanding how 
the calculation of our contribution of the $6 million is reached and how much of what we're paying into the shared contracts actually uh, cover expenses that are destined for Pflugerville or uh, Leander? How is it that we have only had one new service provided to us outside of the shuttle buses? Uh, and yet our uh, debt to you has increased from, was it 980,000 to six, six million in five years. So that calculation for the amount that, that Lago Vista would have to pay is a formula that's calculated, it's from the legislative code. So we can't change that. The only thing that what we do would affect that cost would us contracting with other services. Now as far as these other contracts that we have, how much of that specifically Lago Vista's paying, that's not something that I personally have a breakdown of, and I don't know, I could reach out to our finance department and see if they could kind of clarify, but that amount isn't paid unless the city leaves the network, and it's, it's solely something that the legislator created in 95, and it's formulated based off of that. Yeah, it's not paid unless the city leaves the network. Mm -hmm. You, yeah, you could call it that. I, I believe, it, you know, again, I don't know what the initial intention of the legislative legislature at that time was, but that's how they structured it, was that if a city leaves an agency, then they would have to pay that specific... Oh. It, yeah, it's just, it's, so it's just how it ran. So, I mean, it, if it's just a formula they created and they put into code as far as why it's there, I couldn't speak on that. Don't sit down. So this gentleman over here made a comment about we're paying X amount and we're getting back $180,000. We paid last year, 2021, to Cap Metro through our sales taxes over $900 million. Nine hundred, I'm sorry, nine hundred thousand dollars, not million. I'm sorry, my my bad. Almost a million. I'm thinking in my head, almost a million. I said that, so I'm sorry. So nine hundred thousand dollars a year we're paying in sales tax. That would all come to our city if we vote on both A and B the correct way. The way that, not the correct way. I shouldn't say that in in that way. Okay. They br gave us back. In 2021, I just saw it here, hang on. I think it was um, $41,000, there it is, $42,000. They gave us $42,000 out of the $900,000 we gave them to operate a handful of shuttles and buses that don't meet the needs of most of the people in our community. It doesn't cover my neighborhood. I can't do a call and ride where I live. I can't catch a bus where I live. I can't do metro access where I live. So none of that services half of our community. What the council is committed to do so far, from what I've heard from the city manager and from the mayor, is to provide a service that hopefully meets the needs of more of our population than we're getting right now from Cap Metro. Am I wrong on anything I just said about what you returned to us? So, just one clarification. So, sales tax collected, correct, 908,000. Okay. Uh, the cost of service was set, and that was uh, fiscal year uh, 2021. Right. Uh, cost of service for fiscal year 2021 was 779,000. And so, this year, because it's you know we got to get those numbers in order to calculate what the difference is. This year we provided 129,000 from just taking the the amount that y'all provide us and subtracting service, and, and that's what we give back. So, so your cost of service, not your contractual obligations, but your cost of service to provide the services to our community is $729,000 for fiscal year 2021. That's just for the service in Lago Vista, nothing Correct. else. Yeah. Okay. That's something I'm going to pa pass on just to kind of go over that specific aspect. 
I mean, <clears throat> that's a good question. I mean, in 2020, you know, part of the new service that came about to be was the uh, pickup service that we operate right now. So just in, in short answer to your question, yeah, there was an expansion of service into this community at that time. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, when we uh, worked on the pickup zone uh, that you see today, um, there, was a co there was collaboration that was done with, with staff and, and all. And part of the criteria that we looked at was trying to look at uh, different goals. And right now, our pickup services, we have about 10 zones within our Capital Metro service area. And one of the goals is to, 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 to try to get to a person, when they get a hold of us, either by phone or on their smartphone, within 15 minutes time. And our goal is to get there within less than 15 minutes time. Uh, and so then we also have a goal to get uh, to have an on-time performance of about 90% and stuff like that. And there are some other goals in that area. So we looked at different boundaries. Your community has a, a, a pretty complex network of streets uh, in and around the area. I've been with Capital Metro for 27 years. So I've seen from when we first had the original route that just stopped before the CVS when it was the, the real estate office and it was one stop. I was here when we designed a route that went finally to Bar K, uh, Coyote Trail. We went down to the island uh, and we added that service on top of uh, that feeder. We ended up merging those two services together to what you see today for that feeder. And then uh, when those merged, Metro Access continued, you know, started to provide the service around the boundary there. And then in 2020 was, was the, um, the pickup service. And that pickup service is about 6.3 square miles. And six miles is about the boundary that, that, that kind of suits um, the goals that we have to try and make sure that we are at an area within 15 minutes and try to meet on-time performance. But your question is, could it be expanded? That's, that's a discussion that can be had moving forward. Yeah, I mean, I know it's one that we had with the mayor about different sections of the community. There were, there were things that we felt like because of the street networks that this was the best boundary to meet the needs at that at this time but there are obviously other needs still in this community sorry you could tell i'm kind of nervous um my name is sarah i'm well you've probably seen me work here at lowe's a lot so i take the metro bus pretty much every day to get there the pickup a lot which is pretty much like the best thing we ever had in Lago Vista. To take that away is insane. Plus, I've seen other employees like myself take it every single day just to get to work. If you take that away, we have no work. We have no job. We have, like, no life purpose to do that. So, like, same with, like, our customers at Lowe's. Like, they have to get groceries for their families or for themselves. And same with like the disability. I'm slightly disability. I don't know if you can tell that, but it's insane. When I heard this, I was deeply shocked, disappointed, but I can understand the respect for Capital Metro and the service. I see a few of our customers take the 214, but not a whole lot. I kind of wish there was an expansion for the 214 bus instead of just in single 12 places. Same with the pickup as well, more expansion to that. I know a few of my friends who live way farther away, especially one who lived up at the airport, pretty much for that, so thank you. There's a lot, been a lot of changes in Lago Vista in the last six years since the last election for the withdrawal from Cap Metro. You may recall back then, uh, we were looking for businesses to come to Lago Vista to increase the sales tax and the revenues and our ability to shop right here. And reflecting back on those figures again, that we were about 450,000 for the annual sales tax going to Cap Metro and 900 to, to take care of the net financial obligation. That's double the amount of what our annual sales tax was going to Cap Metro. It's just very, very confusing to me to understand how our sales tax now has doubled in six years and the net financial obligation is over six times bigger. So that means that Cap Metro 
is providing services to some place other than Laga Vista, and we are going to be stuck with paying that net financial obligation. Now, everybody says the legislature did this. Well, the legislature passed that original cap metro thing, and they put funny words in there like, you have to vote no to withdraw, right? When you're really supposed to be voting, yes, we would like to withdraw. But you have to vote no, and then when you don't pass the thing, you have to wait five years to have another election. And that was all in there at the very start of the cap metro. So it was very much against P cities withdrawing. Now Cedar Park did it in 1999. And they recognized what was gonna happen in Cedar Park with the growth that they had with the businesses there. Can you imagine how much money if they'd stayed in there that Cedar Park would be paying to cap metro? Incredible, isn't it? What is, in, what is very pertinent here is what Mayor Ed said. Carts cannot talk to us about how much it would charge us to have similar services here. Similar services. They can't talk to us because we are obligated to cap Metro at this time. So what is really necessary is to say when we vote to withdraw, we need to have continuing services. Even if we have to pay cap metro in the interim until we, until on a contract basis rather than an obligatory basis, and then figure out how the best to service. Now, we had an interim city manager here in, in 2017, Ken Renault. He had been an interim city manager uh, out, I think, in Elgin. And he said carts handled them very well out there. And they had services going all the way in and out of Austin. And it was a minimal amount of cost to the city because of the uh, backing that carts has. And I, I can't remember now, because it's, it's been six years since I even looked at any of that material. But I'm saying, uh, that's very evident to me, we've got to get out this year, or our sales taxes are gonna to continue to rise, and our net financial obligation is gonna to continue to rise, and a city council has looked at this and looked at the financials and say, if they get up and say they can promise to continue the services that, are, that we need here and improve on them, I, well, for instance, if I was 30 years younger, I would think, uh, look at this and say, I can provide a transportation service to the city of Laga Vista for less than a million dollars a year. And I'd be happy with that income. I really would. And so that's the kind of thing. I would hope there are some entrepreneurs out there that might look at this and say, I can do that pickup service. I can do that pickup service with my little whatever car and do that on a demand basis and provide that for this city much, much less than what Cap Metro is charging us for. And we can provide a shuttle, as Mayor Ed said, that goes around the entire city all over. So uh, I, I believe we can do it. Uh, I believe it can be done and we can have better service for all the people. Right now, we have volunteers that actually take people to doctor's appointments. Uh, you can, I'm talking about the, the volunteer organization. If you contact them, they'll help you take, you go to doctor's appointments. But that's part of what we are here in Laga Vista is volunteers to begin with because we built the whole city from, from nothing before, right after National Resorts turned it over to the POA and we became a city. So I'm just saying, I think this is an opportunity we better take advantage of and, and, and trust our city manager and our city council to come up with replacement services that will be immediately effective after the canvassing gets done. I think you pretty much asked all my questions or said what I was gonna say, but I did wanna ask with the city council, 
let's just say we do oppose this, what is the time frame that you're looking at to be able to provide those services? Are we looking at six months, a year? What's, I know it's kind of hard because you can't negotiate with anyone else, but what, what, are, you, what are you guys thinking? Great question, and I'm gonna reiterate what I said earlier is, there is no guarantee that there would not be a stop in services because in order for us to do this, we are bound by state procurement, which means we will have to put an RFP together and it also means that once that RFP goes out, we'll have to evaluate that and then it will have to come back to the council for them to approve. So to give you a timeline of that, I cannot tell you that. I can tell you that they are discussing those things so that we are set on go when that vote comes in to start that process so we can expedite. They have also asked that we evaluate processes in the interim where we may need to provide some of those services and they will also be talking about that as well. So it's not necessarily we'd have a full program in place, but they have every intention not to leave it high and dry during that interim time period. We just don't know what that looks like because it's hard to even fathom how we're gonna put that program together until people start actually giving us some viable information. We've done lots of research. We're continuing to talk to several communities that already have it and we're putting together some opportunities for the council to really take a good look at so that we can venture to those plans as soon as the time is right. But we will have ourselves ready when that time comes. I do not wanna do that because you have a right to your own vote at the polls, but I, if you have not been able to read this room yet. <laughs> All right. I'm going to take Anna's last question and then we're going to wrap this up because I rented this facility and um, I'm on a timeline. <laughs> um, it, it, it appears that there may be a bit of an unfair relationship between Cap Metro and the legislature. Um, and so I'm just wondering what kind of leverage would we have as a citizen group uh, city council, government, to uh, put pressure on our legislators to come up with a fairer way of dealing with small towns such as ourselves. Okay, so history. Following the 2016 uh, no vote, uh, we did go to the state leg legislature in 2017, and we did ask for several changes, uh, one of them being uh, how the net financial obligation is configured, and we asked that the state comptroller's office actually compile the data, not Cap Metro themselves. Um, it made it through committee with some changes, and I'm sorry, but I can't tell you exactly what all the changes were, but it did make it out of committee. It got to the floor, and then there was this thing called the Mother's Day Massacre. And every local and consent bill died on the floor. So it did not make it through the legislation in 2017. Uh, we took it back in 2019 and in 2021. And our representative at that time declined to push the bill forward. So uh, that is the only headway we have ever made with any kind of legislation. We'll see how the vote goes and then we'll take it from there. Currently the way the legislation is, if we stay in, this will not be brought, cannot be brought uh, for at least five years. And I have one question for Cap Metro. The 6.4 or 6.5 net financial obligation, can that be paid off early? We do not have to commit to sales tax for the next five years, do we? So, so I would have to check on that because that, that is collected by the comptroller's office. And I would have to see if, if they would allow uh, the city to pay that off early or if it's just gonna be continue to be collected by them. And so I could follow up on that and provide you with that answer. All right, I have one more. Right. The contracts, the net financial obligations, everything that y'all are entering to, into. As a member city, what say do I have in any of those contracts? 
Yeah, so they are discussed in, in public board meetings uh, before the vote. So we always, again, post the agenda. Kind of every, like every council meeting, it's posted. Uh, anybody could look at it and come in and speak against or for it. Uh, so it is out there. But as, and so if the city wanted to come and speak against something, they can. All right, thank you. And I'm going to get it back to Tracy, but I want to say thank you all for coming out. Good. <laughs> What now? <laughs> I'll allow that. <laughs> there are seven, yes. We'll never finish. Yes, they will. Yeah. So the service would stop at Jonestown. Yeah. And then, was. yeah. So I want to thank all of you for coming out. Your voices are important. I hope that you take the voter guide that is in the back. Um, I appreciate that no matter whether you are for or against, that you know that you have an opportunity to go to the ballot and cast your vote and that the council will be doing their responsible efforts to make sure that we have service if and when that is necessary on our behalf. So thank you for coming out. Thank you for spending your evening with us. Please be careful going home. <laughs>